so I had this patient, right? And sometimes you just catch things really quickly because sometimes you're lucky. This patient happened to have some right knee pain and some left hip pain. And it just so happened they also turned to grab something. They kind of rotated back on the left side, rotated back towards the left. And what was noticed is we didn't really move through the trunk, which you should move through the trunk when you're rotating. But we had some movement, some real excessive movement through the pelvis and through the knee. And that's important. It's important to investigate that because the trunk should definitely move. I don't think anyone's going to argue with me on that one. Now, further inspection showed that it was really that low thoracic region and pretty much the whole lumbar was rigid, fixed, like unmoving. And again, movement's normal for any part of the body. There's certain motions that they do better, but this should definitely rotate. Now, we'd be slightly more specific and say the area was generally flexed. Say it's just, just like that. And now when you're in this flexed position, say take the, the discs and the major joints of the spine, when you're in this flexed position, you are compressing more on the front. You're pushing down on that, so it's like you're kind of squashing it from the top and the bottom because the pelvis is a relatively solid structure. The lumbar spine is, by comparison, more flexible. So under that pressure, we get pressurization of the discs, which slowly starts to mobilize them. And then we get lengthening of both the ligaments and the muscles. The muscles and ligaments are basically closer to their limit. So it's going to stop a full range of motion on both the front and the back of that spine. So it's, it's very much immobilized in this case. That's a very reasonable thing to say. Now calling it something more specific, calling it anything, you know, going over those tiny little rotations and side bends and those flexion and extensions, not really super useful at this point. It's so minimal in its motion, why bother defining it? Get it moving a little bit better before you can even discover what's actually going on. Now here's the thing. When we lack motion in one place, we don't really stop doing that motion. We just steal it from somewhere else. And so another part that is normally not supposed to be doing something, it's, it's not supposed to be doing this harsh rotation in this case, it has to do it. It's going to do something it's not designed for. Specifically, when it came to this pelvis, the anonymate, that's just half the pelvis, was going forward. We call that like an anterior rotation. But it was also coming kind of medial, so towards the inside. By comparison, the opposite side, you could say it was doing, doing the opposite. So the left side was doing the opposite. But it was still relatively moving. So it's kind of kind of more interesting on the unmoving side. That's what we're really concerned with. This is not the painful side on this right side, but it is the stuck side. So that's what we're interested in. So we're spinning, we're spinning the anonymate, this half a hip bone, on that femoral head. And now when you do that, yeah, you definitely have an effect because there was a number of ligaments between the acetabulum, that anonymate part, and the femoral head. And when we start to lengthen those ligaments, we start to make a big difference between the position of this and the relative position of this. We take out the slack. It's like we drive them apart a little bit. And again, just like in the lumbar spine, when we take out the slack of the ligaments and muscles, we start to lose mobility here. So that's not working. I can do that. That got to be a better color. There we go. It's not moving on this right side of the hip joint. Now the pain's on the opposite side. And quite likely, this is because we are not moving on the left. So it forces when we're walking. Remember, we, we don't really change what we do. We don't change our motion. It forces us when we're walking. We have to swing the other side way further. we got to take it through a much bigger range of motion. And this probably leads to a bit of hyperextension, a bit of over-lengthening. The opposite of what we're talking about, over-lengthening to the point of strain. And so chances are it is a usage problem. In fact, the left side, the painful side, is actually doing exactly what it's supposed to, but it's caused by the lack of mobility in the right side. Now, as we get into the knee, that's actually a relatively simple relationship there. The knee 
is made to do only the tiniest bit of rotation. And you could say it's like the femur on the tibia. They do uh, the tiniest little bit of rotation, transverse plane stuff. And that is very specifically to lock out the knee only in a straight leg. So it's supposed to be when we are more like this, when we're doing a straight leg, so we can stand for long periods of time. But it's not really meant to happen all that much when we're moving or twisting. And so what's happening is the bigger rotation of the body, this big spin here, is going down into that knee, and all the weight of that body is being translated into that knee, that torque, that force is straining quite a bit because we've got all kinds of ligaments supporting this structure. And there's there are good ligaments, nothing wrong with them, but ACL, PCL, MCL. Really the capsule as a whole, the, the whole encapsulation of the knee is gonna be on some kind of a stretch in excess of what it would normally be. It's not meant to bear the entire weight of the body in that motion. It's okay to bear the entire weight of that body in flexion extension and in a relatively straight leg but when we're twisting through that that's a bad idea you got to keep that more stable so we are overworking mainly two things should not be overworked and i guess this person had been reaching back in a rotation a lot and that's what was aggravating you know you could say we could fix this by never reaching back never twisting again but that's really not realistic the reality is what we have to do is sort all of this out. We've got to figure out why. We've got to figure out why this whole thoracic lumbar spine is so rigid. Take the pressure off this. We've got to bring this back into a normal position. And then we've got to get motion returned to the soft tissues so that we can actually get movement, proper movement, through the trunk. Only then will we get some kind of a lasting correction to that hip and the knee on either side, on both sides.